All right, I got to make this video really quick before I go to sleep. But all I want to say is that, damn, medicine can be freaking interesting sometimes. State the nature of your medical emergency. Today, I had some interesting patients. And this whole week, I've been getting really interesting patients. And it just feels it feels good. Obviously, I can't disclose too much of it because of HIPAA. But it feels good. I'm really excited because the new medical students, the brand new third year medical students are going to be coming onto their first rotation tomorrow. It's going to be the first time they're ever stepping inside the hospital, basically. And this is the first time I'm going to get to work with like a brand new, freshly minted third year medical student. One of the things that our program just did is that they had us run a like teaching retreat where they taught us how to be senior residents and how to start teaching the interns and the medical students next year and how to lead a team. One of the things that they talked about was setting expectations for your medical students. And so I decided to just whip up something really quick after I got back from the hospital. I decided to give this kind of little handout to my medical students tomorrow. I feel like it might be a little bit awkward because it's the first time I'm ever doing this, but I also think it might be really helpful and successful because there's a lot of things that like as a medical student, student, I wish people made more clear, like having solid objectives for what to do to get honors. Nobody ever tells you their expectations straight up and having it written down is really good too, because it'll keep me accountable. You know, a medical student will have very clear objectives for what they need to do in order to get honors. Okay. So here's my Conan's expectations for medical students handout. And it's a little long, it's one page, but it'll be fine because, you know, they're just going to be able to take this and hold on to it and refer to it whenever they need to. Um, but the first thing that I learned during the teaching retreat is that resident evaluations are weighted the same as attending evaluations, which is not the case at most institutions. That makes me super excited because at some institutions, the resident evaluations really mean nothing. And it's really cool that we get such a big say in how these medical students do. And I think it really makes a lot of sense because we spend so much time with the medical students. Uh, the first big point that I put in is that my evaluation never will have anything to do with their level of medical knowledge. So there is no such thing as a dumb question. And obviously, I don't have that belief in real life. You know, I feel like there is such a thing as dumb questions. But in medicine and in like medical school rotations, I really don't think you're expected to know everything. The, the volume of information is just so high. So you could know so much about one topic and you're very smart and educated, but you just might not know anything about another thing. And that just happens. And it takes time to like build that uh, repository of knowledge up. So it shouldn't have to, anything to do with getting lucky and getting asked questions on the one topic that you know well versus getting really unlucky and just getting asked questions on the one topic that you just happens to not know that well. So anyways, none of my evaluations will ever rely on the student's level of medical knowledge. And the only things that I care about are positive attitude, receptiveness to feedback, showing up on time and acting interested. And I think if I had heard that as a medical student, it really would have helped me a lot more in being willing to ask questions because there was a lot of questions that I had, but I never wanted to ask them because I was always afraid of bothering people. And I was always afraid of asking a dumb question that would like reveal how bad my knowledge was or something like that. And that honestly stifled my growth uh, in medical school for sure. My next point that I put up is uh, when the medical students look good on rounds, it makes me look good on rounds. So if they ever have a question before rounds, I want them to ask me and feel Feel free to ask me whenever. I put always feel free to come run the plan by me before rounds and we can check your comprehension and maybe prep you for some PIM questions. And then the next point is when I tell you to go home and study and relax, it's not a test because there's a lot of medical students who will hear a resident say that, but they're not going to believe them because they think it's a test and, uh, you know, they're going to give you a worse grade if you actually go home to study. But for me, I actually want them to go home. I do want them to go home and enjoy their life and their free time. They're welcome to stay if they want to. And if they're like trying to get more education, but honestly, I feel like they could get more learning at home when they can, you know, rest up, be reset for the next day and ready to learn more and motivated and also be able to look up things on their own time, which is how adults learn is, is by looking up stuff on their own. So a couple of tips that I have for the rotation. Um, I just said, usually I'll ask to check in with you before rounds to go over the plan, but just always ask me if I forget. And then whenever they have a new patient, I would recommend in order of usefulness, A, reading the pocket medicine section, B, watching the online med ed video, or C, reading 
the up-to-date article summary about the patient's primary problem. And so obviously they can pick and choose which one they like, but I thought this would have been a really good framework for me to answer a lot of the pimp questions during medical school that I didn't know because I didn't properly know what resource to look up right before um, rounds when I had a new patient. I want them to present as confidently as they can and to speak loudly. And in my opinion, in general, presenting faster is better because everybody hates long rounds and we just want the medical students to get through their presentations quickly and get really good at just doing a fast, concise presentation. So they should get through the objective information as quickly as possible, never adding qualifiers like, I think I heard a murmur, but you know, I'm not sure. And then also not having to worry about if we're understanding their presentation or not. That was something when I was a medical student, it was always like I would deliberately slow down and then like kind of look around and make sure the things I was saying was right and making sure that people's expressions on their faces looked correct when I was presenting. But uh, I think really they should just get through the presentation as quickly as possible. We're going to comprehend what they're saying. They don't need to worry if we're understanding them or not. And then finally, I want them to pretend like they are the ones making the decisions for the patient, which I know is awkward and hard at the beginning because a lot of times they're just kind of reading off the residence note and and they're not the ones actually putting in the orders or anything, but I would like them to say, you know, I would like to get a chest x-ray or I would like to start IV antibiotics because I think it really makes a big difference to students' presentation, it makes them seem a lot more competent and confident. Uh, I added some things to expect from me. So first of all, they should expect feedback from me halfway through our time together and at the very end. And I just kind of put that in there so they know that when I'm giving them feedback, it's not because they were like doing horrendously or something. It's just because I deliberately want to give them feedback halfway through. And if they don't get feedback from me halfway through. I want them to basically remind me that uh, we should do a quick feedback session. And, you know, I tend to give feedback almost like after every presentation that they give, just like one or two pointers. Um, but I think a little more formal, private feedback a couple times during our time together would be really good. And then I want them to expect a chalk talk or a mini lecture from me at least two times a week. Um, honestly, I try to do one every single day, but I think just sending two times a week really makes it so if we have a particularly busy week, I'll still be able to achieve at at least two times a week uh, for the medical students. Um, and I want them to pend orders for me and really get used to putting in orders. I feel like for me, I remember as a medical student, I thought that would be so you know, redundant and not helping the resident at all, but really it does actually sort of help me. And I really like having them be able to practice putting in orders because I feel like that's a huge part of medical school that I did not get to practice at all. And it would be super helpful uh, as a medical student to be able to practice putting orders in. And then finally, I would like to use their progress notes because I remember as a medical student, I would always write these progress notes and they would just have to be deleted afterwards. And it's like, why am I spending all this time working on a progress note if it's not even going to be used at all in the end? And here at Davis, uh, they actually do let us use medical student progress notes. Um, I just want them to use my specific dot phrase because it's one I've spent a lot of time on and I want them to to use it and, and love it just as much as I do. Um, but I feel like involving them in the team by letting me use their progress notes um, is something that helps them feel more involved. The one downside is it does take me more time to like edit their note and and wait for them to finish their note. But I feel like it's a valuable experience for them. And if I'm really crunched for time, I will probably just write my own progress note. But uh, I think this will be a, a good thing that I would like to have the medical students do. Um, and then just very specifically, I wanted to lay out how they can get a pass or what they call a two train here at UC Davis and how to get honors or a three train here at UC Davis and just have very concrete goals for them to achieve. So literally when I take this sheet, I get, I'll give it to them. And then when they give it to me at the end of the week, I can literally put little check boxes next to, you know, these little tasks. And if they've achieved them, then I can confidently say, okay, you earned a pass or you earned honors. So in order to just get a pass, it's pretty easy. I just want them to see about two patients on average and to show up on time and be professional. And honestly, that's, you know, putting in the work, they're helping out the team. That's basically all they need to get a pass from me. In order to get honors, it's pretty much the same. They need to see two patients uh, show up on time and be professional. But halfway through their rotation with the attending, I want them to ask the attending for feedback on how they are performing. And I want them to actually definitely tell me that they asked the attending for feedback. Because I feel like this is something that uh, medical students don't do enough. And by making this a task for them to do, it's really going to help them a Lot because I think asking the attendings for feedback really is a key part of improving um, and getting good evaluations in medical school. 
once a week, I would like them to tell me two things that they learned on UWorld or online MedEd. And I feel like that'll be really nice because it could be a little bit of a, re- of a review for me, but also it could bring up a couple teaching points that I could tell them like about the specific thing they learned. I could teach them a couple extra points uh, beyond that. And it's also something really quick and simple. It's always going to, it's going to encourage them to be doing UWorld and online med ed regularly in their free time. And uh, that's why I like this short little thing that I put here. And then finally, once a week, I want them to give a five minute presentation to the team, which is already part of their medical school requirement. Um, or do a one to two minute presentation on a paper relevant to their patient on rounds. Um, And this is something I mentioned to other medical school students in the past, but, you know, bringing in one paper once a week is actually super helpful for both the residents and the attendings and the entire team, really. And it's it's very interesting to listen to a lot of times. I remember as a medical student, I did do it a few times and I got really good feedback about it. Um, You obviously have to do it, you know, for something that actually is a relevant clinical question and you're not just doing it every single day during rounds and just wasting time. Uh, But I think this is a really good habit for medical students to get into and it'll really help them on their other rotations as well to get into this habit. And then finally, one thing that I really like uh, from one of my senior residents is, uh, you know, setting, having them set one professional goal this week and one personal goal this week. And I think it's really kind of like an icebreaker because setting the personal goal lets us know like what they do outside of medicine. But having the professional goal is really nice too because when I get the feedback, when I give them feedback again, at the end of the week, I'll be able to discuss, you know, how they did in reaching that professional goal. So yeah, I'm super excited for the newly minted third years to be coming in tomorrow. And I'm hoping to put this to, to the test and hopefully it's not too awkward to do, but uh, I'm really excited about it. I hope it really works out effectively. And I'm obviously going to be tweaking this as time goes on, but I think this is a really good start and totally excited for tomorrow. And let me know what you guys think about this expectations handout that I made, uh, what things you might add to it it and if you like the video like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace